G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, today we're going to have a look at a bit of a weird vehicle. This is the, this is the Helldiver. Yes, you guys have finally, finally convinced me to play the Helldiver. This particular plane was, you know, you'd, you'd think it would be better than its predecessors, but the, uh, the guys flying the Dauntlesses who got their Helldivers actually requested the Dauntlesses back because they thought the Helldiver was that bad. In War Thunder, it doesn't really work that way, does it? No, it really doesn't, because this plane ends up having more armament than some of its contemporaries at battle rating 3.0, uh, at, at higher battle ratings as well. In fact, it has the same armament as the F6F5N, which is at 4.3. This thing sits at 4.0. It also gets an air spawn, which you can see... <laughs> And it's a little bit crazy. This plane... This plane is insanity. You think, well, what what could it possibly be? It's a dive bomber, you know, so it's probably really slow. It's probably got really crappy energy retention. It's probably, you know, lackluster guns, which, you know, we, we already know that's more than made up for with the 250 caliber gun pods. Well, 250 caliber pods with two M2s each. So that is four guns total. So... You end up having six, four machine guns and two 20 millimeter cannons. This plane is crazy. <laughs> Not only that, you can see by the big wings and the nice big fat tail section, this thing turns really well and handles at low speed like an absolute champion. So this is literally, literally the perfect plane to be stomping on Russians and Germans. In fact, I ended up having a fairly good time. I, I discovered or more or less came across this plane while spading the French tree, and this was one of the planes that I had to spade through to continue. And as it stands, I've currently spaded everything from tier 2 to tier 4, except the Bearcat. And honestly, this plane was probably one of the more fun ones. Without a doubt, without a shred of a doubt, this plane was absolutely hilarious fun, and you'll see why in a moment. I'm not even climbing. In fact, I am climbing very gently, but I am trying to maintain a bit of speed, and that is going to be the thing that I'm looking at the most this game. This plane is very, very slow, and so if you want to make maybe catch someone, I'd say good luck, because you're not going to. Maybe you'll catch an IL-2. Maybe you'll catch, I guess, something with a dead engine, or, or, or something that's not paying attention, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. The Helldiver itself sits in two trees. It sits in the French tree, which is the one you're seeing, you're seeing now, and it sits in the United States tree because it is a native United States aircraft. It seems like post-World War II and, you know, into the late 40s and 50s, the French Air Force, or the Naval Air Force, rather, looks like it was given some old United States aircraft. You can see there's a Corsair. You can see that there's the uh, A-35, I think it is. It's that really weird thing at 3.3 with 650 cals and does not turn at all, has a pretty pathetic bomb load and a pretty pathetic machine gunner. It's nowhere near as good as this. This is probably the cream of the crop here. And at least for Air RB, it's probably my favorite, without a doubt. Maybe it's close second to the P63 because the P63 has a special place in my heart. I really like the P63s, but the Helldiver itself, you can see that I can spot a, uh, a target there, a couple of targets, in fact a lot of targets down there, and I'm going to wait. I can see that Yak-3 there, and I'm going to go for the Yak-3 because he's the highest one. In a situation where you have multiple targets, taking out the one that has the highest battle rating or is the most dangerous isn't the wisest idea. You should be taking out the one that is on top because that is the one with the most energy and therefore the one with the, with the most threat to you. The Helldiver... In this case, you know, I've managed to get 4,000 meters of altitude. I don't need a single shred of that. Well, I do just for speed. But most of these fights are going to occur on the deck, and you'll see exactly what happens. I'm going a bit fast, so what I should be doing now is popping the air brake, and yep, that's exactly what I do. I'm popping that air brake, and you can see it's got some big fat dive brakes. Really, really nice to, to slow down, but you shouldn't really be using them in any other situation other than to dive from 4,000 meters and uh, start engaging enemies. One of the things that you notice at high speed with the Helldiver, and even low speed, is that the rudder locks up, and the rudder's a bit funny and, and weird. So you gotta be really careful when using the rudder. It sort of flops around a little bit, and you can see that I'm able to, in a turn, 
keep with a Yak 9M. Wow. The Yak 9M is touted as one of the most overpowered planes in the whole game, and yet, <laughs> yet I'm able to just, just casually keep with it, set it on fire, and there it goes. You can see a Yak-3 coming in, and I'm going to put myself into a slight dive, and then I'm going to roll around and reverse that dive just to throw the Yak's aim off, and hopefully he commits to me, which he sort of doesn't, which is kind of disappointing, but that's okay because he does try and commit to that Spitfire. And I can see there there's a Yak-9 on uh, on my 6, sort of. He's, he's focused on another plane, and I'm going to go for him. He's behind me, so he's a big threat. He's also chasing down that, uh, I believe it's a Spitfire. I can't quite see, but uh, you can see... Those 20 mils doing the absolute work of the gods, and the 50 cals getting the final pilot snipe. The Act 3 is back for a little bit more action, so I'm going to go and see if I can save that Spitfire. I'm going to turn around, and the Yak is going to turn around in the same direction, which means that I can cut in on him, because the SP2C has a really, really great turn rate, and combine that with a lack of energy retention, you can use that to your advantage, but it is more of a disadvantage, unless of course they put their gun, or they put their plane right in front of your guns. So, I managed to get myself three of literally the easiest kills I've ever come across. It's great. It's amazing fun, this plane, and you will consistently get results if you just work your head-ons. You don't need to obviously be a master at head-ons, but you just by, you know, doing a little bit of turning, a little bit of distracting, you can do a lot of work in this plane and have a lot of fun. It's not necessarily a meta plane as such. It's more a meme plane, without a doubt. I don't really see it being a, a massive like carry plane, like the, the BF-109 G2 Tropical. I do see it, however, being one of the most fun planes in the game, simply because you get that air spawn, you don't really need to think too much, and you can just head on everything, and you will almost win every single time. The only things I wouldn't head on are TAR 154s, IL-2s, and Heinkel 219s. And of course, maybe uh, your occasional gun pod, BF-109 or 190. But this plane is, it's such a good meme. It's its hilarious fun. And if you ever get a chance to play Helldiver, do make sure you give it a go. Get those gun pods straight away and then go for the performance. Belts, you don't really need to worry because you have the volume of fire to make up for that. This plane is absolutely hilarious and I love every single moment of it. its It's great. It's just simply fantastic. What isn't fantastic about it, though, is its speed. It's a really slow plane. And you can see the I-185 and the IL-2 are actually breaking away, and so is that P-39. If they just got into a gunfight, you know, if they got into some, some nice little turn fight and lost all their energy for me, that would be ideal. Well, maybe not if they crashed into the ground like that I-185. But the P-63 will eventually, or the P-39K rather, will get into a gunfight. And you can see my engine's overheating because I'm trying to whip and trying to go extremely fast, but you know, it, this thing just does not do fast. It does turn, however, and that is where it shines. It also does guns, so <laughs> in a turn and burn situation, you're probably going to win. As long as they don't decide to turn it into an energy fight and you don't get outnumbered, you should be fine. And as long as you have someone to slow them down for you and keep them in a low energy state, combine this with a P-47, for example, or a P-63, or a, a Mustang, or anything really that can make the enemy, you know, force the enemy to turn, you've got a really good fighter on your hands. It's it's honestly a, a fantastic plane. And it's, it's just so much fun to play. I don't, I don't know how else to put it. It's just and one of those planes that you'll just never get bored of because it's just such an absolute meme. Well, maybe you will get bored of it. In that case, you can go and spade the one in the other tech tree. <laughs> Uh, but obviously, there are plenty of meme planes in War Thunder, and we just don't really look at them, because we always focus on top tier. We always go for the top tier planes, and the top tier tanks, and we never sort of enjoy the little things, and doing the Operation Shipyard with spading low tier tanks and low tier planes, I really enjoyed myself. And honestly, even though I didn't get myself the H-34, I only got the VT-12, I really had a blast, because I played stuff that I wasn't, I didn't know existed. I didn't know it was that fun, I guess. Of course, it, you know, I know it existed in the tree, but I didn't know it was that fun. And I didn't really enjoy it until giving it a go and actually going out there and forcing myself to try it. I honestly recommend that everyone goes and does something like that. Maybe, maybe when you go to spade your planes, 
go and go and spay them during an event. Go and spay them during a marathon, and you're gonna have a lot of fun. You're gonna take your mind off the event. You're gonna focus on something else. You know, you don't even have to focus on kills. You can just spay them. And if you spay them, then that's your little, little mission that you can accomplish. And maybe you get one or two kills every game. Maybe you know you die straight off the bat, but you're on your way to spading those planes, and and that's what you know you focus on, and that's how you grind your events. For me, I found that extremely helpful, and honestly, it, it made it just such a blast to play. Having those French attackers and French bombers, even the even the Leos and the MB one seven five, I think it is the one seven four as well. I th I think the four engine one, the heavy one, that was a lot of fun. But for me, I think honestly, the Hell Diver absolutely takes the cake. Head ons all day with an LA five, two Shvax. That armament is so lackluster that you know. 250 cows will beat that. I would take 250 cows over two Shvax any day. And lo and behold, I managed to win the head-on without even pulling away. I just thought, you know what, screw it. I'm going to commit. And I did. And I won because Shvax are terrible. Four kills. Not bad for a meme plane at all and not bad for just going into a turn fight. It's hilarious fun and honestly, I, I just wish there were more planes like this and more opportunities for me to you know, go and look for them. It's good fun, and it's just it's just so much fun to go down the low tier, find a meme plane, enjoy yourself, and maybe earn some silver lions or spade some vehicles or grind out an event in the meantime. Anyway, ladies and gents, that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much. That means a lot to me, especially recently. But um, yeah, this plane, go for it. Go and spade it. Go and have some fun. It's going to be worth it 100%. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.